are getting that update there, mm -hmm. 4 o'clock update that everyone's been waiting for. Yeah. Let's check in with meteorologist Peyton Malone. Hey guys, yeah, the 4 a.m. update just dropped. They're going to maintain the intensity at 90 miles an hour, but uh, the hurricane hunters are flying through it right now, so they could update it if they find anything stronger. Here's the big update. They do think this could make a run at a cat two again. So overnight we had, we're saying, yeah, it may not make it there, but it's running a little ahead of schedule. So the 4 a.m. track here does have it strengthening for the next 12 hours or so, and that could bring it up to that category two status and mo moving inland as we get into this afternoon and evening. Landfall still looks like it's going to be anywhere from 5 to 7 p.m. And they haven't changed the location of the track that much. We've still got it coming right through the heart of the bayou and river parishes. Everyone else, really all of us, are on the east side of this landfalling storm. So yes, could be a stronger hurricane at landfall. Right now centered over St. Mary Parish, putting Terrebonne and Lafouche right on the eastern side of what could be a Category 2 storm making landfall. Now, the good news is we do think the wind shear is going to begin to increase right in here as the storm approaches. So that should help level off the intensification and hopefully weaken it some, but certainly level it off as it begins to move inland. And then by tomorrow morning, it'll be still up towards the Jack area. So that is the latest track here with Hurricane Francine, a 90 mile per hour hurricane right now. Hurricane Hunter's in there right now. They're checking it out. They will let us know if they find winds any stronger. And of course, the Hurricane Center will let us know as well. There's a closer look at the track. You can see there the center is going to wobble in somewhere right in here. That center could still come in closer to Terrebonne Parish or St. Mary Parish and that moves across our region. We're all on the east side, so we will see some stronger wind gusts from this. Now, while we do expect this to be a stronger storm at landfall, we're still not anticipating a major problem like Ida. We're not expecting a four or a five, but this could be very similar to what we saw with Zeta, a very similar path and a very similar speed and intensity as it's coming into our area. So that is something we'll watch. Zeta cause massive flower, uh, power outage problems, so that's going to be uh, an issue that we'll have to watch. Once again, the hurricane hunters are in there and they are flying right through the center of it as we speak. It'll be interesting to see, do they find it strengthening at all? The National Hurricane Center's update, they're maintaining the intensity with that 4 m update, but with the hurricane hunters in there as we speak, we will see if they find this thing, if it's maintaining, if the pressure is dropping, if it's leveling off or if it's rising. That'll be very important on how strong this storm could end up getting. So the Hurricane Hunters data, it is flowing live as we look at it. That is a live visual of where the plane is right in the heart of the hurricane as we look at it right now. So I'm keeping a close eye on that and I'm going to update you as soon as I see the raw data coming in and we'll have a uh, an, an analysis on what it exactly looks like. Now, tropical storm force winds are still well offshore, but here's an estimate on when we think they'll start. It looks like they'll start anywhere from noon to two o'clock for our coastal areas. Let's fast forward it up to around four to five o'clock approaching the metro and up towards the river parishes. And then those tropical storm force winds get to the north shore anywhere from seven to 8 p.m. into tonight. The worst winds will be traveling across the area a couple of hours after those initial winds start to arrive. So you do still have some time to get some things done this morning if you are trying to, but uh, eventually that time will run out as we get into uh, the afternoon hours. And so make sure you're getting and you're rushing to get anything done as we look right now. So the Hurricane Center saying Francine has strengthened and become better organized overnight. The radar data and early reports from the hurricane hunters indicate the eye wall is better defined. There's been thunderstorms wrapping around the center of the hurricane and it has contracted a bit from earlier. That means it typically is strengthening more and the winds could be picking up. Uh, they are flying through it right now and they will uh, let us know what they find as these, uh, the hurricane hunters are flying through it. It's moving at, <coughs> excuse me, at about 10 miles an hour. So it's still moving at that rate that we were watching earlier. The speed will probably increase a couple of more miles per hour as we go through the morning and then eventually it'll slow down just a tad and it's not going to stall over us, but it will begin to slow down as it slowly starts to make that turn. So as of 4 a.m. we haven't seen any major adjustments except for that intensity at landfall. And uh, once again, the hurricane hunters are in there right now and we're literally getting their live data as we look at the storm uh, right now and they're right in the center of it and I'm curious 
they are, I mean, right in the center of it right now. So what they're doing is they're going to drop a drop zone is what it's called. That's the device they literally shoot out of the bottom of the plane. It falls to the ocean and it measures the pressure. And that's how we know exactly what the intensity of this storm is. So we will see what the pressure does. If the pressure is lower with this update, then that means the storm is still strengthening. And so that means it could still strengthen more as it makes its way towards the Louisiana coast. Now looking at the latest track here, we haven't seen any major changes in that track track. So there's no big changes with that. It's just that the intensity is looking a bit higher. We are also going to wait for um, our storm surge updates to see if they update these as well. And I'm looking at the numbers right now and they have bumped up some numbers. So they're still calling for the five to 10 feet in Terrebonne Parish and down into Terrebonne Bay. They are calling for four to seven feet for Grand Isle and into Barataria Bay. Now they're calling for four to six feet for Lake Pontchartrain, especially on the North Shore, where the winds are going to be out of the south for today and tomorrow. So four to six feet, that is significant inundation there for some areas, and then four to six feet for South Mississippi. So those are the changes with our storm surge numbers. The lake is expecting a bit more, especially on the North Shore. The South Shore, if the storm stays to our west, we will have winds coming off the lake or out of the city and onto the lake, which would push water further to the north. So that's what the latest storm surge numbers do look like from this 4 a.m. Uh, advisory. The advisory also says that uh, further intensification, it is possible through the rest of the morning. It's wind shear is still not really that strong. It's developed that core as well, and that is allowing the storm uh, to certainly maintain, but also maybe strengthen more. We haven't seen any updates with our watches and warnings. We still have hurricane warnings for Terrebonne, Lafouche and St. James parishes. We have tropical storm warnings for the metro area and the North Shore. We also have tropical storm warnings for South Mississippi and also into Southwest Mississippi. So there really hasn't been any significant updates to the impacts across a large portion of the area, except for uh, areas are right along the coast. If it comes in a bit stronger, you may see some stronger wind gusts right there along the coastal areas and a category two can produce strong wind gust and if it maintains its intensity right there along the coast and on the east side of where the eye makes landfall we're talking maybe portions of Terrebonne Parish we could have coastal areas right along the Gulf reporting wind gusts over 100 miles an hour now that's not going to happen across our entire coast that will be very uh, sm a small area confined to right where the eastern side of the eye comes on shore. But if that happens anywhere just south of Homa, you could certainly see some wind gusts starting to approach that triple digit mark and that can certainly do some damage. So if you are in the, the Bayou parishes and I'm speaking to those who are still in temporary housing following Ida. Maybe you're in a FEMA trailer. Maybe you don't have a, a, a home that has a foundation or it's not locked down in with a foundation. You don't want to ride out this hurricane in that. It's a good idea to either ride it out with family in a sturdy structure like a house that has a foundation or go to one of the shelters down there because you start to get wind gusting over 90 to 100 miles an hour the closer you get to the Gulf. That can definitely toss those things and they can do a tumble and um, certainly that is going to be on the dangerous side. So if you are just joining us, it is 404 here. The National Hurricane Center just updated the 4 a.m. track and the intensity. We're maintaining at a 90 mile per hour hurricane right now. The track, though, calling for it to strengthen up to a category two before landfall. And notice it could be a category two well before landfall and then making landfall would be late afternoon this evening, anywhere from 5 to 7 p.m. The center is still right near St. Mary Parish, but you know, these things wobble, so it'll be interesting to see. Does it come in more in Terrebonne Parish or maybe closer to Vermilion Bay? These are all a possibility as this storm makes its way inland, moving northeast at 10 miles per hour right now. So any last minute preparations, they can still be done this morning. We don't have tropical storm winds in our area just yet. I do think the tropical storm winds will start to move into our coastal areas by the one and two o'clock hours. So anywhere from noon to two o'clock, tropical storm conditions start to approach our coastal areas for the city. Anywhere from two to four to five o'clock is when our winds really start to pick up. And then the worst of the winds will be into this evening. And for some, it'll even be after sunset as Francine moves across the area. Something else we'll be watching with this is the heavy rain. I do think there's gonna be a corridor of some very heavy rain with this system. We're talking about rainfall totals that could top out around a foot 
or so. And where that's going to happen is going to be on the northern side of this eye. So the when you need eyes on the storm, Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin is in Lafitte from our Mobile Forecast Center. The Mobile Forecast Center, sponsored by Nissan, has Southeast Louisiana covered. Get the latest weather data, real time weather information. We can fill in the gaps where data may be missing. Up to the minute forecast. We can drive it out and see exactly what's happening. And live video from inside the storm. The Mobile Forecast Center, sponsored by Nissan. Decrease very, very quickly as we get away from that core and we could be only looking at a couple inches as you get closer to the Gulf of Mexico. That's if the storm moves inland in St. Mary or near Terrebonne and travels across the river parishes. This pass path would also bring the worst winds across the river parishes and the bayou, but obviously skirting New Orleans. I think we could see gusts in the city close to 50 to even 70 miles an hour, especially if this thing comes in as a category two hurricane. So that is the latest as of the 4 a.m. advisory. The National Hurricane Center says this could still strengthen. Uh, we're still watching the live data coming in from the National or the Hurricane Hunters. They just flew through the center as we speak, waiting for that data to come in on if it's strengthening at all. They will let us know if the pressure is dropping and if the pressure is dropping, we could still see this thing make it up to that category two later on this morning and into the early afternoon. And if you're wondering where the wind shear and dry air are, uh, they will begin to increase this afternoon and evening. So that's why we think the intensification could happen for about the next 12 hours. After that, if the storm's going to start to approach land, the wind shear will kick in, the dry air will kick in, and the interaction with land means this thing will probably weaken fairly quickly and become very unorganized. So that's good news. It's not going to penetrate far inland as a hurricane, we don't think. but. Nonetheless, that's a category two potential right here along our coast, making landfall and then moving across the heart of our area. Most of us on the east side of this, getting that storm surge, getting those strong wind gusts that could cause power outages and leading to even isolated tornadoes. So that is the latest as of your 407 or four o'clock update. And Brandon and Bree, I'm um, keeping a very close eye on those Hurricane Hunter data to see if this thing is stronger than what they're saying at 4 a.m.